Okay, so this is part three of this session on modeling sites using AutoCAD and 3D Studio. So we're back at AutoCAD and we need to enhance the, the detail uh, quite a bit. The, the model is far too crude. So I'm going to bring back on all the, uh, the, the layers just now. So I'm using the keyboard for this. Minus LA, return, on, return, star, return twice. Okay, we've got the buildings through in 3D Studio, we don't need to worry about them anymore. So I'm going to freeze those off. Okay, and so what we what I mentioned in, in the last video is that generally you find that roads are horizontal across across the road, but they could be sloping up or down in their long direction. Okay, so what we need to do is try and establish you know a bit more detail for the road areas. So I'm just going to concentrate on this area predominantly, okay, this, it takes too long to, to surface this whole thing and show this in a video, it'd be far too tedious. So I'm just going to concentrate on, on one area and then you would apply this to the rest of the model. Okay, so I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this 3D Spine. Okay, I'm going to use this to, to create a line up the length of the road. Okay, I want this to be fairly visible, so I'm going to go for, for yellow and make it current. Okay, so what we're going to do is a, is a 3D polyline from the correct height above this point to the correct height above this to the correct height above this. Okay, so the command is 3D poly return, and I want to start the line in this position in the X and Y coordinates, but at 7.3 meters above it. So to do that, you use a filter, and the filter here would be dot x y return of this point, and then the command prompt saying, okay, you told me where it is on the ground, what height do you need? Okay, so I need a height of 7.3. Okay, so you can see now where the line is trying to start. If I spin around a wee bit, I'm 7.3 meters above. Oh, I shouldn't have spun around. Okay, you're just going to have to believe me. I'll start that again. Okay, 3D poly from dot xy of this point, height 7.3. Okay, so I'm not spinning around now. And I'm going to take that to the dot xy of this point, but to a height of 8.6. So it's dot xy of this point, height, so it's asking me for the z now, 8.6. Okay, so you can see the light yellow line, and then my next, my third point, dot xy of this point, the height, 10. Okay, then enter to finish. So that line is running up the length of the road, picking up you know, more accurate positions provided by the Ordnance Survey or you know, actual survey points. Okay, now we look down on this. Plan and return twice. And what I want to do is firstly create a shape for this junction. Okay, so this road would come down but then it would kind of level. It would level at the bottom. Otherwise, you kind of cars, everything kind of collides at this point. So really, the junction wants to be pretty much level. Okay, so it's not a steep road, so it's not going to be noticeable. Okay, so let's use just do a polyline for this one. So we'll say that this is going to be the level of the junction. So we'll take a line from a nearest point. So ortho off nearest onto the O snaps, and a polyline from here to this point will do. Okay, and then trace around, and I'm just tidying up the ordnance survey a little bit. Okay, so I'll take this roughly, well, maybe take it up the road a wee bit more, then take it perpendicular by eye, perpendicular. Okay. 
Okay, I don't want to go too far up the road because it will be noticeably level then. Take it right the way across to the other side of the pavement. Okay, then we can tidy up what's happening here. Okay, and because this is a polyline, it's staying at the height that we started with. Okay, the Ordnance Survey, pretty rough. So I'm kind of making things a little bit tidier. Maybe come back a bit too far there. Let's go into about here and then here. Then we'll go across the road and try and pick up where we started. Okay, this bit of line can be removed. So we can take that back to there. So we've created a polyline at the correct kind of level in the world. Okay, so that's fairly fairly easy. That's, that's easy to turn into a surface. Okay, these are more tricky coming away from that. Okay, so we'll click. What we'll do is create kind of ribs at, at key points. So we've got something happening here on the site. There's a change in here. It might be the step in a garden wall, you know, ownership boundary. So I'm going to take a line from nearest on the yellow, on my spine, to a nearest, to end point. And then repeat that on the other side, just to make a kind of a, a proper rib cage coming down the road. Okay. I've got a couple of features here. These two happen to be kind of in line with each other, so that's handy. So this is an access point into another property. Okay, so it's a polyline, it's not a 3D poly, so it's a polyline from nearest to nearest to end point. Same on this side. Go from the end point that's there now to nearest to end point. Might be better to pick up the side this side of the opening as well. It makes it easier to model later on. Okay, we've got a change here, we've got something happening rel relatively important there. So we pick up these points and just mirror that on the other side. Okay, let's do... Down here we've got 7.3 and we've got another junction here, so let's, let's ch change this one into a junction. Okay, so let's go from the, the end of the line, so I'm tabbing try and get the end of the line. I'm just going to take that to here. Okay, so for this area, it's all going to be at 7.3. Okay, bring it around the bend a bit. Okay, and then we'll go across the road. Okay, and the next, ob the next level point is actually at 7.4 meters, round about here. So this whole area is in, in reality actually pretty level. So we can do, be a bit more generous with this. Let's, let's pick up these points. Okay, and like before, we kind of close that. So if I sw switch it over now, we should find that we've got you know, much more material to work with. Can you see the see what's happening. So we're trying, we're picking up on key positions but also giving us something that we can trace over. Okay, so the next step is to put surfaces onto these but what we'll do just before that is, is add additional polylines for the footpaths on either side here. Okay, so turn off the pavement layer, turn off the Ordnance Survey pavement layer then go back to the plan and we'll add these shapes as well because these will be level, these will be at the same kind of level as the, the, pay, as the road. So I'm going to trace over these, simplifying it if I want to. So let's go to the nearest there and I'm looking for the end points now. Use the tab key if you can't Pick if you can't find an endpoint. Tab key will find it for you. And then close the shapes. Use the letter C to close the shapes when you're done. Okay, let's get the end of that wall. See how really badly the Ordnance Survey stuff is drawn. You know these guys digitized this many years ago. They didn't even have t computer screens to look at. So 
tabbing helps you find the next point. Okay, so you just run along looking for the points and then C to close. Okay, do the same up here. Okay, I'm looking for useful points to pick up as I go. It's, a, it's not a fully straight line, so I've got one there, one there, and then C to close. And lastly, 3D poly these areas. You notice I'm always working away from the, the original shape. Changes of direction. Got a wee one there. Uh, it's really quite laborious, but nobody's going to do this for you. Uh, there isn't anything you can actually pull in that will say, yeah, yeah, there's a pavement, here's all your stuff. You've got a thing like City Engine and the likes, but you know, they're pretty crude. They don't they don't do it in the detail that you necessarily want. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the kind of framework for our roadway and our pavements. We now need some some layers to, to, to change these into. So I'll add a new layer here, 3D road surface. And I'm gonna make that a light blue. Okay, and then another one, 3D path surface. And I'm going to make that just a colour that I haven't used so far. So I'm going to go for kind of a, a fairly warm colour for the pass. Okay, I'll make the uh, make the roads the current layer. Okay, now we, we've not got too much stuff underneath that's going to confuse us. Okay, so we can work with what we've got. So it might be handy to have these shapes usable later on. So. I'm going to copy these before I destroy them. Okay, so I'll copy these two shapes just now. Okay, just pick a point, come back to the same point. So there's two of them there at the moment. Okay, we can region both of these because they're solids. Because they're sorry, because they're closed polylines, they can easily region them. So I'll shade that. You can see we've got two kind of road surfaces. Back to 2D wireframe. Now we're doing 3D faces. And we're using our spine instead. So let's let's just switch this stuff off. It makes it a little bit easier to see what's happening. Okay, so it's 3F. And where you can do four-sided ones, do them. So it's one, two, three, four. Return to get your command back. I've got too many points here, so I'm going to take it to here and then to here. Do a three-sided one at that point. I can now do a four-sided one. So I'm going from across the road to the other side of the road. Okay, so we don't come back to the spine in the middle. Okay, there's no need. You just add in extra triangles. Okay, if I shade that, we should have a road. Okay, and you can see that it picks up on the bend in the road as well. This is all important stuff if you want the model to look reasonably accurate. Okay, now we change to the path surface. Okay, we can region these. Let's region these, turn them into paths. Okay, let's scoot that. And then we need to 3D face along the edges. And I can show you a little shortcut here. 3F, pick 1, 2, 3, 4, keep going, 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, okay, speeds it up a heck of a lot, do the same on the other side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, pretty laborious, but you get the, the shapes you want. So 
shade that and we can see the road. Okay, next step would be to bring the 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 surface back to AutoCAD to then try and meld it melt it in to what we've got here. So I think we'll do that in the in the next video. We'll stop just here because I've shown you how you generate your road surface and that could be the starting point for the model. You know quite often that's the case. That's what I need to start with. Okay you can see here that it's not tying in with the edges of the model so we would have to do a bit of tidying up there to give ourselves a tidier edge. Okay so we'll stop the video just there and then move on to the next portion of work.